And our top story, the effort to expose corruption in the Obama-era FBI and Justice Department. House Intel Committee Chairman Devin Nunes is now seeking transcripts from the secret of FISA court to find out what the FBI said in order to get a surveillance warrant to spy on former Trump aide Carter Page. The Republican House Intel memo released last Friday showed that the discredited Trump dossier was used to, to secure the surveillance warrant for Page, and the government omitted key information about its political funding by the DNC and Clinton campaign. Tonight, we are still waiting for the release of the Democratic memo rebutting those allegations. The White House moments ago releasing a statement saying President Trump met with the FBI director, a senior Justice Department official, as well as the White House counsel's office to get their input on the Democratic memo, adding, quote, the president is weighing his options and will respond soon. Our next guest says the evidence is already in. Obama-era leaders of the FBI and DOJ willfully abused their power in order to spy on political opponents. Joining me now is Congressman Andy Biggs, a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, Congressman Biggs, I first want to ask you about Senator Warner, uh, because one of the key components of that FISA warrant clearly was the Trump dossier. Uh, the Trump dossier came from Mr. Steele, who may have just been passing information from the DNC uh, and then passing that on to the FISA court. But why was it that Senator Warner was so anxious to meet secretly with Mr. Steele back in February of, of 2017? Well, we don't really know because he, he hasn't really said. But, but I can tell you what it looks like. It looks like he was trying to get some, some juicy uh, gossip, some tidbits, something. Um, and he didn't want anyone to know. I mean, why else do you say, let's not create a paper trail. Let's meet out of the country. Let's, let's make sure nobody else is, knows what's going on. Now, he, now it, was, it was rather inartfully done uh, because we do actually have that email trail. Um, and apparently uh, the, the Senate uh, knew about it uh, several months ago, but, but we didn't. And it's just now coming out. So it looks funny. It looks odd. And it looks, uh, you know, you could, you could deduce some malevolent intentions yeah. there if you look at it. Well, you, you mentioned that some of his uh, Senate colleagues, Republican Senate colleagues, did, did know about his attempts. But it was, as far as I can tell, it seemed to be months later, uh, or at least a month later, uh, while he was saying that, uh, talking, by the way, interestingly, to a lawyer who was working for a Russian oligarch, uh, while he was trying to arrange this meeting with the the Russian oligarch's lawyer, uh, who also could intercede in him getting a meeting with Mr. Steele, uh, during that initial exchange of emails, I don't believe he was alerting his, his Republican colleagues in the Senate, was he? No, that, that, that's true. It, it doesn't look like he was uh, letting anybody in on it. it. And not, quite frankly, not until maybe some people got suspicious. I mean, this looks like a Cold War uh, spy who came in from the cold type of thing. I mean, you're looking for, was there a drop uh, locations for secret materials? I, it's just so bizarre, it is. quite frankly, what, what we see going on. And uh, it, it just looks really bad, at least looks really bad. Um, I'm trying to figure out, and I think we're all trying to figure out, does it tie into uh, the use of the dossier for for the FISA warrants, and does it, uh, you know, uh, tie into the DNC? Does it tie into Hillary Clinton's campaign? This is just, you know, I think, David, I think you can appreciate this. It seems like every couple of days, some big shoe drops. Yeah. And it's somehow connected to something else. It's just a very complex... We don't see many shoes uh, coming from the Mueller investigation, but from this investigation, right. which, which we and members of the House and the Senate are looking at, there are quite a few shoes dropping. Uh, and, and for those of yeah. us old enough to remember uh, the Cold War era, I'm, I'm reminded yeah. of that word disinformation. That's information that the Russians used to put out to try to discredit people. And the more you hear about the Steele dossier, the more you see uh, parallels to disinformation. Not only was a lot of the stuff coming from the Russians, but apparently more and more and more we're finding out that the stuff came directly from the DNC, from the Democratic National Committee. And Mr. Steele may have just been pimping it out uh, to various agencies, including, by the way, the FBI. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's outrageous, but, but that's how badly they wanted to keep power. And this is, this is what is so bad about this, is that we are uh, a, a 
constitutional republic. We're built on representation. That means we should have transparency and openness. And this kind of, I mean, we're not talking dirty tricks a la Watergate breaking in. You know, that's a, that was a petty burglary to, to find out some records. We're talking here trying to scuttle an entire political campaign and election and by, using by the using, powers. And by using one of the most sacred courts in the land. The FISA court is the one court that allows our, our spying agencies, whether it's domestic spying through the FBI or international spying through the CIA, to spy on Americans. If that is abused, it goes to the core of what keeps us safe from the government uh, turning tail on the people. Exactly. I mean, it turns into a star chamber where, where they're, they're, they're conducting investigations um, based on little or no evidence. I mean, it, it, it allows the perception of manipulation for political reasons to spy on political opponents. Yeah. That's what it sure looks like that happened here. That's what all the evidence is pointing right. to. I don't dispute that. I think that's what happened exactly. Mr. Biggs, I got to ask one more question, even though they're giving me a rap here, which is that yeah. uh, we know we're beginning to find out the frightening details of how this was used. The FISA court was used for political purposes. I'm wondering if you've suspected if this was kind of a matter of course, if this had been done before, I think of all the unmasking that was done by the Obama administration yeah. right before the change of power. Uh, some of it happened after the election, but before Donald Trump took over as president. All that unmasking, is it just coincidental that it happened right before and right after the election? See, I don't think it is coincidental. We to go back to Susan Rice, and she, is, she made comments to get as much of this unmasked as you can, get as much of this information as you can now. And by the way, most people think it's, oh, it's just some data, phone numbers and whatnot. It is far more than just data of, and phone numbers. There's a whole lot of information that goes with unmasking. And I think it's a pattern, and I think it's uh, an abusive pattern. We see it in the Obama administration. I'd like to know how far it goes back. I want to know how deep it goes. And the American people need to know that as well.